and it looks like we're live. Hi, I'm Matt and welcome to a first for me actually. Well, first for the RC Daily Mail anyway. Uh, give you like a, a heads up what we're going to be doing uh, this evening. Well, it is this evening here in the United Kingdom of wetness because it's chucking it down out there. It's going to be going through a whole raft of mail which I've had turn up here uh, which contains RC parts. Now, uh, apologies for the ad hoc nature of the, this evening's live event. Uh, my brain is frankly utterly fried from work today. I need to work out a way of getting rid of a Squidian redirect uh, without hitting one of our servers. So um, uh, that's the challenge which I've got. Uh, and uh, with that said, um, I've got a chunk of mail here. We're going to have a nose through and see what's been received. Now, I will give you a heads up. I have actually been through this lot to see what's in here. And one of the boxes, to be brutally honest, I knew it was servos. And I've already been in there and I've already been in Nick 2A. Uh, if you have any questions about anything which has turned up here, brilliant, by the way, thumbs FPV, you can hear me nice and clearly. Thank you for that, fellow. I do appreciate it. Uh, but if you do have any questions about anything which I've received here, please just ask. And that was my primary motivation behind the uh, In The Mail episodes originally, is because j reviews are one thing, but you genuinely never really know what you're going to get in what it, like what it says on a web page to what actually you get in real life. They, they can be a disparity between the things. And as modelers together, uh, we can share our, our experiences. And this is me sharing my experiences uh, with different products which I've bought out of my own money. And I want to stress that from, from the off. There, ah, there is one exception in here. Um, uh, almost all of it I've bought out of my money, but there is one thing in here which they've sent me to re for review, and I'm fingers crossed it's good. Um, they, there are links to all of these items in the video description, and for absolute transparency, they are all affiliate links. So if you use any of those links, uh, you will go on and support this YouTube channel. So with that said, a uh, quick heads up to those of you which are in uh, the live chat already. So Blue Flyer FPV. Uh, Arthur is on here, BMX is on here, Thumbs, FPV, Kev is here as well, Turbo Tyler, Camel, oh actually I do have a separate screen for this, I was playing with it this morning, oh hang on, someone hasn't changed the thing in it, apologies, uh, so you'll have to look at the chat above my head, uh, who else have we got on, Camel's on, uh, Roderick's on, Raymond's on, uh, and Skyris UK is on, oh Andrew, uh, howdy Matt and fellow nutters, right, so with that said, I'm still drinking coffee. Uh, we've not gone past 6 p.m. here, U uh, UK time. And hey, David, nice to see you on as well. Mmm, Chain and Heather's on too. Howdy. Right, with that said, let's start off with the first thing. I've got the knife here at the ready, but I don't need a knife for this one. Uh, is that I ordered, what was it, 18 of the Tower Pro servos. Uh, and this time around, they actually sent them in a box. There's like absolute shed loads. And like I said, to be frankly honest, I've already been in them. Um, I don't know if you know about these. They, I'll put them up on the web camera for you. If I do that, it might actually focus. Uh, just that they're, they're not nine gram they are the same size as the hobby king plastic nine gram servos uh, but they weigh approximately 12 grams and when you buy them in packs of six they are generally cheaper than the cheap hobby king ones now I have to put my hand up uh, there was one about three months ago which just didn't sound right uh, so I ripped the lead off it and threw it in the bin the other ones which have broken have been um, broken due to abuse. Uh, landing inverted into barbed wire fences uh, doesn't do them any good. Uh, getting smacked at about 50 mile an hour by another flying wing while slope soaring straight into the servo and the control horn uh, also killed another. Uh, and I killed another one with my elbow dragging it up to one of the slopes so uh, they are great but there are limits to all of these things so um, that's how much I think of them and that's not the first batch which I've had here I've got through so many surveys lately uh, they're at an absolute bargain uh, Blackbird says I don't do mornings but afternoons are good for me happy days happy days indeed so we got some servos I do rate them and like I said I've bought all those out of my own dosh Right, what else have we got on this one? I don't think this one's going to be too exciting because, well, it is kind of exciting for me, actually. Oh, there's more in here as well. Aha! 
Brilliant. Let me stick that in the filing cabinet, along with that too. 11 by 7 propellers. Now you may be wondering, Matt, what do you need 11 by 7 propellers for? Uh, I need them for two reasons. Number one, we have the Mini Sky Hunter, which we did the live unboxing last week on. Uh, we can use that on the 1100 kV motor, which has actually arrived here somewhere. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's what that's for. Uh, and the 11x7s I also use on the clouds or the XUAV clouds as well. Uh, and I wanted to keep a spare set of these and I bought uh, clockwise and counterclockwise propellers as well. Now the reason why I bought uh, clockwise ones is because what I was aiming to do is have the two propellers spinning in towards the model just in case it like torque rolls off to one side. But in reality, uh, that wasn't the case at all. But these have turned up now, so I've got some spares. Happy days, they're just generic APC styled ones. Um, and they were super cheap. In fact, I've got those up on my screen here somewhere. Ah, there we go. Uh, approximately, well, worst case, $3.26, which is peanuts, to be honest. Uh, quickly going across to the uh, chat, which is going on. Uh, Blue Fly says the missus is on. I'm relegated to the garage while she has a woman moment. Uh, welcome to the workbench. Uh, what have we got on there? Mark Leach. Hello, fella. I can feel a servo gimbal coming on. You might be correct on that one. Uh, we've got a servo gimbal to do for the Phantom FX61. We've also got to do it for the clouds as well. Uh, and I'd love, well, I've already got a 361 on the uh, Mini Talon, but I'd love a, so I've got the pan, but I'd also like a tilt on it as well. So we'll be looking at that. And remember, um, I don't know if you remember, a mail one, one of my last mail opening episodes, we had uh, some S uh, S bus to PWM converters. They're absolutely fantastic. Uh, and that me now means that I can get access to all of the, uh, channels on SBUS and I can then link them back round to the Eagle Tree Vector as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, there we go. There is the evidence on here. Uh, just like it to go, Matt. You know I didn't mean to hit your slope. It was completely on purpose. We were scrapping. It's fair game, isn't it? <laughs> uh, so, I don't know if we chat in combat, but it's all fair game. Uh, and that was Andrew, by the way, who I was uh, slope soaring with at the time. The ah, I want to leave that one to last. The next one which we've got, I have, can't remember. Let me stick that in the filing cabinet. Ah, one million bullet connectors. So let me see if I got these on the tabs up here. There we go. Some straight. Put my hand behind it so it focuses. Uh, some 3.5 mil bullet connectors. Now, I don't know if you're anything like me, but I seem to get through the female ones more often than the male ones. And unfortunately, they don't sell these uh, with just the female ones. Uh, but I almost, I'm almost i glad these have turned up because I've got the Team Legit Twin Zoo build. Uh, and I need six of those already uh, to go on because of the way which I'm mounting the pair of ESCs underneath. Uh, and the, by the way, the Twin Zoo, the, the, the uh, the indication is in its name. It's got twin motors on the front and I'm going to run two 30 amp ESCs up underneath the wings. But because I may upgrade the motors later, uh, what I've done or what I'm doing is mounting the ESCs underneath. But I'm going to be connecting the ESCs using those bullet connectors so that I can easily upgrade to say a 40 amp ESC on, on each side at a later date and bullet connectors just make it dead straightforward so I don't have to go and pull out a loom or anything like that um, and it also means that I can embed the wire and loom down inside the fuselage uh, and end up with like a really tidy result but on the other hand uh, end up with um, the flexibility uh, for me later. Uh, Mark says better all day ferrite ring to stop getting servo jetty. Yes uh, got those for sure um, FPV flyer says, sorry, blue flyer FPV says, light Velcro, I always run into scratchy stuff, <laughs> fluffy stuff. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, Raymond, always handy to get them, and what did I, pe there was 50 pairs in there uh, for $9, so peanuts, peanuts in the scheme of things. Now, the next, uh, I want to, like I said, I wanted to leave that one. The next one we've got is, ah, <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, 
I don't know if, and again, I'll need to put my hand behind this so it actually focuses. Can you see that? Anybody know what that one is? If you do, let me know in the chat. And while you're letting me know in the chat, I'll quickly open one up which hasn't, well, they've all had the uh, label go over the top. In fact, why don't I just get straight in the bag and be done with it. Now, these are super cool. Have you anybody guessed it yet? If you know what it is. Hello, Jay. How are you doing, fella? And I apologies if I'm looking down there. That's where the live chat is. Uh, what I've been and got there, and again, I sincerely hope this is going to focus on the camera for you, which is, no, it's trying to find me there, like so. Uh, what it is, is the ability, well, that allows me the ability via a PWM signal, aka servo lead, uh, is to change FPV cameras. So have you seen the size of the clouds? So potentially I could have two FPV cameras running off the same model. I thought that was gonna be super cool. Uh, and that's why I've been in order a couple and I need to save all the pins and stuff. Now, uh, good, cool, my name is Jake. That was very close. It looks very, very much like a minimum OSD board, but no, uh, what it is is a uh, AV channel switcher. I think I've got it here on one of the tabs. Ah, there we go. It's one of those. That's what it looks like. I need to move my head out of the way, so let me turn me off a moment. Uh, that's what it is. There's a little board there. So we take our receiver, which can of course be any channel. Now in my case, I will end up doing that on channel uh, five, six and seven, because uh, I'll have two extra servos in there. Um, to be able to switch uh, the cameras over. So what we've got here is our receiver to switch uh, between them. Uh, and then let me just get this right. So we've got uh, ground, and then that's where we take our video wire, which is typically the yellow wire, and put it in there. So we'll put that on our second FPV camera. And then on the first AV camera, so we'll assume maybe this one's on the nose, and this one's at the back or maybe on the wing. Uh, so we'd put the, the one which is on the front into AV1, or in, in uh, AV in one, so to say, and then we then take out the grounds and the AV signal out, uh, in my case, into the vector, so that we can run two FPV cameras at the same time, which is pretty good. Mark says, can you get BBC Bristol on it? Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And next is the flying knives for Blackbird. Happy days. Oh, glued up the nose on the Sky Munter. I don't know if any of you saw the uh, photograph of my poor little micro Sky Munter at the moment. Uh, we had a bit of a channel conflict issue on the flight line on Sunday. And um, yeah, it's uh, a bit brain, uh, to say the least. Right, next one. So we've done that one. Aha! Get this one out of the way. Right, I'm in love with these. Now, don't forget, I'm sure this is the right one. Yeah, let me move my head out of the way so it actually focuses. Come on. No, it's not focusing. Uh, in short, it's a Runcam Owl Plus. Now, I haven't been calling the UK the United Kingdom of wetness for no reason at all. It's belting it down with rain out there. We've had some horrific weather, and next week's supposed to be getting... It's going to be a little bit drier, I think, but it's also going to be pretty damn cold. So that means frosty mornings, misty mornings and stuff like that. And I'm here trying to get this camera out and it's not coming out. So that is the Runcam Owl Plus. And again, I'll see if I can put my hand behind the back of it so it actually focuses uh, for you. Come on. Just there. That's the Runcam Owl Plus. By far, and I mean by a country mile far, uh, that is my favorite FPV camera out of the box. Uh, the two settings which I change is that number one, I turn wide dynamic range on or make sure it's on. Uh, and the other setting which I change is turn it off saying run cam owl plus on the, on, on the screen. Uh, it doesn't have an OSD built in, uh, but it does, what's the voltage range? Uh, five volts to 22 volts, which is epic in short, uh, considering I only ever normally run uh, 2S to uh, 4S, 
spot on, and they are by far a country mile my favourite FPV camera. Uh, Andrew says, Matt, have you been singing again? No, I'm afraid not. Right. Yeah, Kev. Uh, Kev says in the background, do like that switcher, fixed gimbal, uh, and w yeah, would work well. Just imagine the clouds. The it's the fuselage is about this long on it, and you can have. I've got a fixed camera in the nose, but there's nothing stopping me from having uh, a pan or tilt camera back on the fuselage because it doesn't matter if I put a small child on the back of it. <laughs> there's so you can put so run so much battery in the front. Yeah, I thought it'd be pretty cool just to uh, rotate the FPV camera around on the back. And of course, if I set it up so maybe. Uh, I've got the run cam on the back and maybe the FPV camera sat on top so that I can do pan and tilt like that. That would be pretty damn cool. Uh, usual goodies in the run cam. They have lovely silicone wire. I don't know if you've, again, it's focusing upon me. Uh, you get some lovely silicone wire in there. You get the OSD switcher. You get this other useless cable for AVO. Uh, and then you do get a little bag of goodies, which uh, includes the little mounts, uh, a replacement back plate as well if you don't want the little lobes on the back, uh, and also a plastic mount as well, which I'm frankly I've never used. Uh, happy days, Apple. Like I said, they are my favourite. I think I'm up to five of those at the moment, which I'm not trying to like show off. I'm just trying to make the point. They are bloody good cameras. Hence, why I've now got five of them. So file that down there. Move that out of the way. What else we got on here? Ah! And I am just going to pause for a moment just to have a quick look at the chat on here. Um, Thumbs FPV, did you try the Run Cam Monster? Uh, Thumbs FPV, do you want to just elaborate on that one? Which one was that? Uh, Tyler says, I used the Monster Thumbs. Uh, they're great if you have 16 by 9 goggles. And uh, Yeah. Uh, Raymond says, is the owl better than the eagle? Now, here's the thing. With the eagle, uh, you can basically fly straight into bright sunshine and still see the ground. And you'll also make out the clouds and also around the sun as well. Whereas the, if you do that in a really bright sunny day, and Andrew, I'm sure, will vouch for this as well. Uh, which is that if you run the run cam owl plus in a really bright day and you don't turn some of the sensitivity down on it uh, is that what we found there was a wall where the sun was hitting and it just ended up with like a glowy line uh, where the sun was hitting it still perfectly flyable but it was really like it just couldn't cope with the amount of input in them uh, so yeah Raymond they are brilliant for the utter rubbish weather we got here at the moment. Uh, also, the quad pilots are flying around at night in car parks uh, in full-blown colour with them as well. The, the Lux rating on them is uh, absolutely bonkers. What's the... F Let me just check. Uh, 0 0.001 Lux. So it, it can cope with darkness, but you do need light. If you go out in complete pitch darkness... No good. You'll need the Run Cam Night Eagle, uh, which is brilliant, by the way. I've got one of them here. Absolutely amazing. Uh, but the Run Cam Owl Plus, it can deal with low light conditions. For example, imagine a car park where you've got the street lamps above you would be great. Um, but pitch darkness, no, it's it just can't cope with it. So, yeah, good question for that one. Turbo Tyler says they have new versions coming out that have an OSD built in suit. Yet yeah, the Runcam uh, Swift 2 uh, has been released now. Uh, that's got the voltage checker on it. Nice idea. And also a flight timer as well. Yeah, pretty damn cool to say the least. Uh, yeah, and BMX, just seen BMX's comment, uh, comment in there. Runcam Swift 2 looks good with an OSD built in. The Runcam Swift is great for uh, if you have like normal lighting conditions so like a normal day not normal winter's day like we've got here in the united kingdom typical summer's day spot on the one thing which i'd also say about the run cam swift is that i've not been and received one yet which has been what i would class in focus uh, so do look out for that uh, if you do get a run cam swift and i've not had to tweak one of the run cam owl pluses uh, but i do own two swifts 
Uh, they are very, very good. Uh, anyway, in that bag was one Squillion JST connectors. And uh, the reason why I ordered one Squillion JST connectors uh, is because the other day I went to go and use one and I had one left. Now, the other reason why I bought a couple, well, number one, it was cheaper to buy bags or however many they were. There we go, they were a bag of 10 uh, in short. So, oh, 20 pairs. Uh, so that's happy days for me. Now, the reason why I'm interested in JST connectors is because when I was wiring up the uh, clouds uh, is that I had like two different power systems going on. I had a six volt VEC in the side of the clouds to power the vector, uh, not the vector, to power uh, the servos and the receiver. Again, because we had like almost 1.5 meters uh, distance between the video transmitter and the, uh, what should we call it, um, receiver uh, I, and the servos being spread out everywhere I went from 5 volts to 6 volts and I knew the servos could take them because they were the Corona 939s I think I put in there uh, and uh, yeah but for the power system what, what I wanted was the power system to have separate connectors to the like the uh, S-Bus the servos and things like that and the obvious, obvious selection for that uh, was to use JST connectors because it's really obvious when you open the model up is that any JST connectors because they are literally bright red and again I'll move my hand out of the way so you so it actually focuses uh, so that because they are bright red uh, is that I knew know that those are for power um, and of course I've got one um, back unit to do the servers and the receiver and I've got a separate um, back which actually runs on five volts for the LED, uh, the flashing strobe lights. Uh, and then something I'd like to do later on uh, is also then go on and run a 12 volt back in there as well. Again, using the JST leads uh, to put some LED strips uh, on the back. Uh, you know, on the clouds, we've got this long stretch bit on it. Uh, so we can have some LED Vs on the back of it as well. So, uh, no, they are not silicone thumbs, uh, FPV. They are, they're a bit stiff. They are a bit stiff. They're not silicone, unfortunately. Uh, but they look good enough quality. They'll take an ample two, which is all I want them for. Um, they're not going to be in any high current applications. So, yeah, they're fine. It would have been really nice if they were silicone, but unfortunately, uh, they're not. Uh, Wayne has just made a very, very uh, good point. Careful of the uh, amperage pull, which you're absolutely correct. Uh, I'm only going to be putting short amounts of LED strips on there. So we're talking milliamp years rather than amps, uh, if that makes sense. But very, very good point. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Olin says a uh, minor right of plastic. Yeah, minor plastic as well. It's not the end of the world. Well, it would have been nicer if it was silicone, put it that way, more flexibility. But where they're going to go, they are going to get attached to the slightly side of the model uh, and there isn't going to be any great movement in them uh, there. <laughs> uh, yeah, Wayne, you're absolutely Yeah, go careful. Uh, they will get hot and melt. Uh, yeah, that's obviously we're putting too much current through, but we won't be doing that in my instance. Um, Blackbird says the Hobby Ball ones are better. Brilliant. So if Hobby King, I've got the silicone ones. Grab them if they've got them in stock. JSTs, uh, that is. Happy days. Good tip there, Blackbird. Again, this is the reason why I'm sharing them. When I, those ones which you can see on the screen, which I bought from Banggood, are the hard plastic ones. Uh, by the looks of it, Blackbird's been and found out the ones from Hobby King uh, are the silicone ones. Brilliant. So when I finally use those up, and there's 20 pairs in there, um, I'll get some from Hobby King. Brilliant. Uh, Raymond's just chipped in as well. The, I agree, the ones from Ho Hobby King are good. Brilliant. This is why I'm sharing this with you. And thank you for sharing backwards as well. I really do appreciate it. Let's have a quick sip. Uh, on to the next one. Ah, I've already been in here as well. And I can. the reason why I know I've already been in here is because I needed them. The... Oh, what was it? The TBRC uh, Reflex 38, which I've been working on. Uh, I ordered these up, and I just need to make sure there isn't any in here hiding. Uh, and I'll show you what they are in just a sec. Let me get one out so I can show you. Yeah, I've already been in that bag. They are these, which I don't know how well 
that's going to focus if I turn that round. They are the blind servo horn connectors. So uh, I really do like these. Have I got these up on the screen so you can see them? Yes, there they are. Uh, I went for the white ones. And again, let me just get my head out of the way. Uh, I went for these. And the reason I went for these is because it makes uh, making your own control uh, push rods a lot blooming easier because you only need to do one bend. And if you're like me and you don't have a Z bend connector or you want the flexibility of getting the um, push rod off on the flight line, for example, at a later date, these are super cheap and they're not bad quality, to be honest. Uh, what Because of the speed which the, uh, what do we call it, the Reflex 38 is going to be going at, is that once I'm happy with the flight characteristics, uh, and I've got her all trimmed in, and if I've reset anything on her, what I'll end up doing is also putting some uh, heat shrink tubing over the top of those uh, to ensure that they never, ever uh, come off in flight. Now, they will, they do clip in really nicely as it is, uh, but if you've got something doing a plus 100 miles an hour, um, you want to make sure nothing's coming loose on it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, Kev says 20 cents per pair, they're disposable items. Uh, Hedy says, don't, uh, yeah, don't go with JSTs when you eventually, um, patients admit on the EFX. Absolutely. Hedy says, what's the EFX? Right. Thanks, Andrew. Right. Uh, the last one which I've received here, and um, I've got to be honest with you, I have had a sneak preview. Like I said, I've had a look at all these items already. Uh, and the manual on it is, um, how, do we, how do we say this politely? Um, useless. That's the polite you, that's the polite version. It is, and I don't know if you've seen these on Banggood, the DVR03. So apparently this is the same as the uh, TX03, which was a bloody good camera, by the way, the same as the TX02, that was very good too. Uh, so this one should have the power switching on it. So uh, what is it? 25, 50 and 200. And apparently, uh, as we discovered with the 200 one, uh, sorry, the TX02, uh, is that it also had an off mode as well, which I found inadvertently. Uh, but what's, why is this one special? If we have a quick look, is that on the back of the camera, which I'm, if I scroll down here somewhere, hopefully they've got a picture of it. No, they don't. I'll tell you what, let's open her up and take a quick look. Uh, is The bit which is special about it is that it's got an SD card slot on it, hence the name DVR, so that we should be able to record at camera level. Now, this is the key point, at camera level. So unlike, uh, say, on the uh, Fat Sharks, where we've, we've got the DVR recording, we are recording the received signal, uh, so that that's going to be... 640 by 480 approximately on our goggles if we're lucky uh, whereas that this one because it's got and again I really don't know if you're going to see this on here is like let me get this right on there yeah you, it's not coming out on the camera but inside there there is a tiny little SD card slot and I'm gonna see if I can get there I don't know if you again I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this on the camera can you see that I've been and put the SD card uh, in there just on the top just there because it's the at the point of the camera apparently we can record in what was it 720 yeah 1280 by 720 uh, so that's 720p so that's not like full HD at 1080p which is the width of the screen uh, but 720p is not bad and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see on the back it's got a tiny little microphone on the top which I thought was pretty damn cool now, the bit which is confusing me, we've got three buttons on the back and we've got a button on the top. So I'm guessing the little button, I'll tell you what, should we power it up and see if it works? Yeah, that's the point there, Wayne. Uh, great if it looks good. Uh, run cam not needed. Yeah, you could save some weight on that. And Well, what's the run cam two ways? Was it 76, 78 grams? Something like that. So what I'm going to go and do, and again, I haven't been in this box yet. I've literally opened it up going, what the fuck is it? Uh, to see what was in there. Uh, 
making sure I've got that wired up the right way round. Uh, I tell you what, I've got a set of goggles. Let's turn those on and uh, we'll see what happens. Now I have been stuck a camera, I did have a uh, sorry SD card in there. I'm just going to plug it in. It's just the little um, uh, mozzie connectors, the connectors which look again. I'm the little white one down there by my finger. It's the little mozzie connector. So we've got pretty lights and it tells us we've got three bars so that's a three bars and one now i think off the top of my head is that three bars is probably the uh, full monty but uh, let's turn it on and i'm going to quickly go and scan on the goggles what's the weight on that matt no idea is the uh, honest answer let me zoom through there and see if it can pick it up on those goggles. Again, I'm looking for something very specific here to see what it's like underneath the desk and to see how well uh, it copes with uh, light changes, which is always the biggest concern. What was it? It was the MC02, uh, which we had, and that thing was blooming dangerous, to say the least. So I'm going to change the channel. So I've not picked up anything yet. It's not looking good, is it? Thank you, Skyris. Apparently, three bars is 200 milliwatts. I'm literally not picking up anything on those goggles yet. So, I tell you what, let me hold down the little button. Uh, I can change bands. So, let me change that to band F, which I know is uh, the fat chart band. That's the easiest way of explaining it. Uh, so, apparently, we're on F5, I think and hold this button down for a while keep holding it down ah yeah don't know if you're gonna be able to see that on there oh great there's nothing quite like doing this stuff live is it let me just hold down that button so we'll keep an eye on the little flashing one so that's the channel band i'm keeping my thumb down there we go we can go ah look and then we end up with zero so I'm going to leave that now on 25 milliwatts, uh, and we are on band F5, I believe, which is, yeah, I believe, yeah, band F, which is 5740, 5760, which is the fat sharp band. And I'm just here doing the auto search. Do you know what? That's not picking up anything at all. Like I said, there's nothing quite like doing this live. I've either got a duffer or I've done something wrong. Which is, frankly honest, it's probably the wetware on the end. So uh, let me just go and turn these on, am I? And by the way, um, it's a receiver, so I'm not that bothered about the antenna being off when I've powered it on. Right, well, I'm picking up nothing on that one. So I've either got a duffer or I've not read the um, roughly English manual on it. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have a look at that. I will update the uh, Facebook group later this evening and uh, let you know whether it actually works or not. Because right now, that don't work for me. <sighs> nothing quite like doing stuff like <laughs> <laughs> uh, to say the least. Uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, yeah, Wayne, you are absolutely right. At 200 milliamp fears, um, sorry, 200 milliwatt, uh, it will get hot. Uh, and yeah, Kev, that makes sense. It's three bars, so that's max power. So you'll see me turn that back down to 25 milliwatts. Uh, but I'm literally, I've got a one of those, uh, what they are, the, what was it, the VR? Oh, there you go, it says on the free front, VR. 007s, which I think I paid about 20 quid for. It's great because I can chuck these at the kids and go, stick those on. Uh, and don't care if they end up fighting over it, you know, because they were 20 quid. Uh, whereas the fat sharks, I'm like, don't you dare drop them. <laughs> for, and no, it's not the lens cap. I had the lens cap off. Uh, it's, uh, it's not that. 
I don't know. I'll have a look in a minute. I'll up, like I said, I'll update the uh, Facebook group later on uh, this evening. So to quickly recap what we had in the mail. Remember, this was a live mail episode. So who knows if we got a duffer or not? So maybe it's a duffer. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Genuinely don't know. Uh, and as we saw, the manual is horrifically badly worded i we've got three buttons on the back no idea what they do at all because that doesn't make any sense at all we have the run cam owl plus for right now here in the united kingdom of wetness the best fpv camera to choose saying that i do have a run cam eagle and the picture quality is absolutely amazing, especially if you do fly in towards the sun. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, we had some bullet connectors as well. Uh, the nylon locks for just make you just basically mark where you need on your uh, control, uh, push rod. Mark on there, get the pliers out, bend 90 degrees, click, and then stick one of those on the end. Jobs are good. And, and like I said, I'm a little bit paranoid with mine. So once I finish trimming in the uh, Reflex 38, uh, is that I will then um, put the trim back in manually or physically on the model and then go back and then put some heat shrink over the top of them uh, so that I know that they won't move uh, in the future. Uh, oh, good point actually. Camel, you let's take the SD card out and just rule that out. So I'm going to plug that back in again. That's plugged in. For the sake of a few seconds, yeah, good one, Camel. Oh, hello, we got a screen, but we have got a black. Do you know what? That's exactly what it is. So I'm just doing a scan again. We had it up on the screen just then. He says. I can see it. Come on. Hey, oh, come on. Right. Brilliant. I really don't know how well you're going to see that in there, to say the least. Again, there's the camera. So it was the SD card. There we go. And I think it's the, uh, the actual webcam having issues focusing uh, in there. Now, the biggest test which I'm unfortunate, you're gonna to have to see the underside of my desk. So we are going from bright sunshine to darkness. Ah, uh, look at that. Now, is that the camera or is that, sorry, is it the camera, this one, or is it the FPV camera crapping out? Who knows? I'll tell you what, we'll find out right now. Yeah, right. You're gonna to have to take my word for it, but this one, doesn't have yeah sorry ladies and gents that one how do I explain this um, it's it right there's the goggles right we we'll go down in the dark so there's the computer down underneath wash out wash out that one is gonna be really really curious uh, on what it does out in the real world so I'm not gonna go out and test it more because it's dark here at the moment um, that one's got 50 50 I'm not sure on that one with the TXO2 the TXO3 uh, the MC01 uh, they all handled that test really really well and this one is the complete reverse this one did you see it? the screen just went white in front of our eyes yeah BMX there is a um, question mark around its light handling. Uh, so tomorrow uh, I will take this out, I'll take the uh, fat sharks out and we'll see how it handles uh, some daylight conditions. Uh, and I'll do exactly the same test. I'll take it from a very, I've got a big bright light up there which is comparable to the sun because my eyes are really hurting now. Uh, and down into the darkness underneath the desk. Uh, it was all right going from very bright to dark but when we brought it back up, it really did white out on us, which 
I've not seen that before on one of these little cheapo cameras. So yeah, we'll go and see how this one does in the real world tomorrow. And Camel, massive hat tip uh, for the suggestion of taking the SD card out as well, uh, because it all magically uh, started working. So yeah, peculiar. Now, measurements, I, can, I haven't got one of the other ones next to me, but I can tell you this is about 30, 40% bigger than a TX03 or a TX02. Let me just put this on the desk and I'll give you a rough idea on measurements. Uh, it's approximately 20, oh no. I'd say it's about just 29 millimeters wide by, and the board's on the back, probably about eight millimeters deep as well. It is a much bigger camera compared to the TX02 or the TX03. That said, we're talking grams. I mean like literally grams. Uh, and also we do have, just like with the TX02 and the TX03, we also have a mounting issue as well. Um, so it will be a case of having to go on Thingiverse uh, to see if we can find a little platform for that to sit in. Uh, and the bright sparks who invented the camera will wire the camera up. These See those bottom cables on the bottom? They protrude out. Yeah, let me put it around that way. Look, the, cam the wires are poking out the bottom. So that's going to make mounting this one a bit of a pain. Why they didn't mount it out the side uh, or even on the top would have been a benefit, to be honest. So, yeah, 50-50 on that one. Very 50-50. Uh, BMX says, maybe the SD card has to be formatted. Uh, no, that is not the case. That literally just came out of the Runcam 2. Uh, so it's a good camera. It's a, it's a known good SD card. I literally took it out uh, before we started. So again, really, really good call. Uh, Jelly says, uh, did you also own the TX03? Yes, I did. Fantastic little camera. Works great, light handling on it, pucker. Obviously, not really comparable to a Runcam Owl Plus for light handling. Uh, it, here again, comparing it to the United Kingdom of wetness. But on the flip side, it did all right for what was 20 quid? Brilliant, brilliant little one. Uh, SD2 large, could have been. It is a 32 gig card, which I've stuffed in it. Again, you know as much as I do, I, the manual was atrocious. So, yeah, it could be that. And unfortunately, I don't have any more. Actually, I do have a one gig card, which came in the back of the Tyrannus. So I could give that one a whirl. Um, yeah, Skyrus, uh, fairly pants, right? It's not looking good. But tomorrow, like I said, that's first impressions. It may surprise us outside. I don't know. But first tests, it's like kind of like the reverse. What was it? The um, Ishin MC02. Horrible little camera. Uh, didn't perform in here very well. Took it out to fly it. And uh, I think I labeled it as dangerous. It was an awful little camera. And on paper, it said it was bloody brilliant. Um, but in the real world, it was bloody awful. That's the only words for it. So with that said, that kind of concludes today's live mail session. Um, ooh, what else did we get? Oh, we had the little FPV camera switches. That's gonna be really cool because I wanted to set up two FPV cameras uh, on the clouds, um, maybe on another model uh, later today. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, we had some propellers, JST connectors, which as many of you mentioned in the chat uh, is the Hobby King do the silicone ones where there's the ones from Banggood or at least on that listing anyway. Uh, they are the hard wire ones, so if I bend them, they do kind of t um, retain some of their uh, bendiness. If that made sorry, they do they're stiff. And the thing which we had at the beginning was the MG90 cheapo servos. They're great. Obviously, you're not going to stick them in a model which does 100 miles an hour, but something like which is a little bit more slow flying, for example. And for the record, I did try them out in the Tech Sumo, and um, yeah, they just didn't have the torque in them now. I've got four kilogram, nine three, is it? No, not though, uh, Corona 238s, though. They run on four kilograms worth of torque in them. I can make the Tech Sumo hyper stall now. Brilliant. Uh, bonsai, brilliant uh, servos for that. 
uh, Chong Hink Den there. They've, they're actually in the Phoenix 2000, they're in the AXN, uh, they are in the Slow Stick. I've also put them in the Hummer 3D, I also put them in the Reactor 3D model. Uh, they're great. Brilliant. So with that said, oh, uh, Steve, hello from Bristol. Down to you in Devon. I sincerely hope it's not raining with you because it's bloody horrible up here. Um, how big was the, uh, sorry, I'm just going back to the to Camel's comment. It was 32 gig was the size of the card which I put in the um, DVR 03. Uh, those of you, um, well, I won't be able to cover it in tomorrow's RC coffee chat because it'll still be dark here because it'll be 6 a.m. in the morning. Um, tomorrow daytime, we'll give it a whirl. Who knows? It could be good, it could be bad, but first impressions, not that good right now. But it does have promise because it was the reverse. It was getting blared out and then it would uh, tone back. So genuinely don't know. So it's time for me to wrap up. Those of you which joined me live, thank you ever so much for doing that. I really do appreciate it. And I have really enjoyed the banter and the chat and the sharing of the knowledge uh, in the background. Uh, I am going to go and do a shameless plug for the Facebook group. Now, those of you which are on Facebooks, we do have a group called Rag the Nuts Off. There are over, move that out of the way, uh, there are over 540 cool pilots like me and you on there. It's free to join uh, and there it is a nice place to be. In short, you've got a question, ask it. It's a really nice place. And by the way, I stuck a big question in there about in there this morning. In fact, there's two things which I was struggling with first thing this morning. Something to do with a full-size Sky Hunter uh, and the Team Legit FG36 race wing as well. Um, and yeah, the feedback which I've personally had in there has been fantastic. Uh, and yeah, it's a cool place to be. So if you'd like to join in with the chat after this, over on the Facebook group. I will put an update in on this one later this evening if I can make the SD card work in it. Uh, and tomorrow, as soon as I find out whether it works or how good it works or maybe how good it doesn't work, I'll post it in the Facebook group first. So with that said, for myself, Matt, thank you ever so much for joining me this evening for an impromptu RC Mail episode. Like I said, this stuff had just stacked up here for days and I just haven't got around to getting in there and the bits which I did need like those uh, connectors for the uh, for one of the wings um, I did look on the front right I'm having some of those and just grabbed two out and then ran over and put them in the model and the same for those servos as well so with that said if it is still daytime with you and you're going to be flying out this evening have a fantastic evening's flying uh, if you are maybe in the northern hemisphere and it's getting starting to get dark about now, um, maybe tomorrow is a flying day. And on that note, it's time for me to go. Thank you ever so much for joining me for a impromptu mail episode. Time for a slip. Cheerios. <laughs>